Hello guys and welcome back to another video and another video on the BMW. Now then, it's only going to be a short little video today. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of waiting on a few little parts to arrive so I can get on to do some modifications and whatnot. Um, but today I want to be going over the essential monthly checks that you should be doing on your BMW. Without further ado, let's get outside and let's take a look. Okay then, so to start off, we are going to start in the engine bay and we're gonna check all of our fluid levels. Now we're gonna start off with the oil level and now some BMW engines may come with a dipstick. Mine luckily does. If it doesn't, I'll show you in a minute how to check that on the iDrive. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and check the oil level with a dipstick first. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to dry off the dipstick. I'm going to pop it back in. Now then, as you can see, the oil on the dipstick is between the minimum and the maximum. Now, ideally, you want it to be at the maximum mark, but because my car is on a slope and because the dipstick is located near the rear of the engine, it's obviously going to be giving us a slightly false reading, so it will show lower than it actually is because most of the oil is going to be towards the front of the sump. Um, as opposed to at the rear. So if you can, you want to try and do this on a level surface just so that you can get a, um, a good indicator of what it's actually like. Um, but to be honest, anywhere between the minimum and the maximum is good. Um, but now we will check on the iDrive to see what the oil level sensor is saying. Okay then, so here we are. We have the iDrive system. Now bear in mind, mine is the CIC. If you have the Mask 1, Mask 2, CCC, um, or even the later iDrive systems, then your way of checking the uh, oil level may be slightly different, but I'm gonna go to vehicle information, uh, vehicle status, then engine oil level, and it says engine oil level measurement not possible before ignition on, so I'm gonna switch the ignition on. Measuring engine oil level, Engine oil level sufficient for engine start. Accurate measurement possible only when engine is running. So I start the engine up. And there we go. We can see the engine oil level is right at the max mark, right about where you want it. Now, regarding your oil, it is also worth checking the oil cap itself. So I'm just going to screw this off. And it's also worth checking to see that you haven't got any condensation build up. As you can see, there is no condensation on here. It usually looks like a kind of like a white creamy substance. That's when condensation mixes with the oil. Um, you usually get that from short journeys when the engine isn't getting up to operating temperature. So it is also worth checking that every month or so. Now the next check we're going to do is the coolant level and this is obviously the expansion tank so I'm just going to remove the cap. Don't attempt to do this when the engine is still hot. Um, if you are going to do it when the engine is slightly warm make sure you just remove this slowly just to release any of the pressure otherwise you might end up with boiling coolant in your face. So I'm just going to screw this off. Let's have a look. As we can see the coolant level is right around the max mark and that's right around where it should be. Let's put the cap back on. Now then, next fluid we are going to check is the power steering fluid. Now, for whatever reason, power steering fluid is often overlooked. People do not replace it often enough and uh, they tend to let their level get too low but it's kind of the same principle there's a minimum and a maximum mark so we'll uh we'll dry this off and as you can see there is two lines and it's obviously the top one is the maximum bottom one is the minimum you want the level to be somewhere between it or at the maximum and we'll put this back on 
screw it in place and as you can see it's right at the maximum mark and the fluid itself should be quite clean it's actually a green color in my case I've only just replaced this around just done a full power steering flush so I know that the fluid's good but if it's getting dirty it may be a good time to change it out okay so the last thing I like to do in the engine bay is top up my screen wash because there is no real way of telling how much uh, screen wash is in there apart from trying to get down and physically looking at the uh, filler bottle on the i drive it only lets you know when the level is low i just like to keep it topped up every month or so so i'm just gonna pop my water funnel in just gonna pour some screen wash in this is the uh, concentrated version and, uh, and now I'm just going to go ahead and fill the rest of it with water. Now bear in mind, obviously in the colder months, you're going to want to add more screen wash and less water because it kind of acts as a de-icer as well. It works in down to certain temperatures. So the one that I've just poured in uh, works down to minus 23 degrees Celsius. So obviously the more of that you add in, the uh, colder temperatures it's good for. And there we go, that's filled. Now I guess another thing that you could check for in the engine bay would be leaks of course, you know, oil leaks, fuel leaks. So we'll remove the engine cover itself. And typically if you're going to get a fuel leak, it will be from the fuel rail or from the injectors themselves. And uh, sometimes these leak off pipes, they like to uh, leak a little bit. And, uh, and then round the injectors themselves as well. So if you see some pooling of uh, fuel around the injectors themselves, then it may be a case of changing an O-ring or in fact the copper washers themselves. And then when it comes to oil leaks, obviously you only have certain access looking into the engine bay, but you can check around the rocker cover. So that is Underneath this plastic thing right here, you'll see oil running down onto the cylinder head, uh, maybe running down onto the exhaust manifold, and, uh, and then around the back. And uh, to be honest, that's really all that you're going to be able to see. Uh, possibly, you may see a leak coming from the uh, oil filter housing, in which case you'll see it uh, somewhere down there. But um, if you keep your engine bay nice and clean, like mine is, you'll be able to see uh, leaks a lot easier. Now, the next thing you're going to want to check is the tires. So both the tire tread and the tire pressures. Now, I actually have one of these handy uh, tire tread checkers. So uh, basically you just put it into the tread, push down, and it shows that we have five millimeters of tread. Obviously you have to do it all the way across just to ensure that you're Tires are not wearing unevenly, which it would indicate that we are wearing more on the inside on the front. That is probably down to the negative camber, slight negative camber that we have on the front. So we've got, what's that? On the inside we have around four millimeters and on the outside, five millimeters. And now let's check the rears. I'm pretty sure these are gonna be slightly lower than the fronts. We have three millimeters, three and a half millimeters, and four millimeters. And then this is obviously a newer tire. So we have six millimeters, six millimeters, and six millimeters. 
Now then, when should you be replacing your tires? In my opinion, you shouldn't really be going any less than around two millimeters. Obviously, I know the legal limit is 1.6 millimeters, but really how long is that 0.4 millimeters gonna last you? You know, if you do a, a slight burnout or whatever, you could just scrape off that 0.4 millimeters and uh, yeah, you're essentially driving with illegal tread levels. And now next thing I'm gonna do is check the tire pressures themselves. And we're gonna be using PSI, cause that's what I like to use, pounds per square inch. Yeah, try not to let all the air out of the tire like I'd nearly just done. 35.5, that's good. I like to have 36 on the front. Oh, quick little tip as well, if you are using these aluminium dust caps, I'm pretty sure I did make a video when I installed them, but it is okay to use them, but make sure you just add a little bit of anti-seize to, uh, to the threads of your um, valves, and then they won't seize on them. Yep, 35, that's good. I just had to let a bit out because it's saying 36.5. 30.5, that's a little bit on the low side, so I'll probably add some air into that one. 36. Hmm, that's interesting. So this one's 36, and the other side says 30.5. We may have a slow puncture. Okay then, so I ended up uh, inflating my rear tires to 34 PSI, then I've done the fronts to 36 PSI. Now obviously this is going to vary depending on how much weight that you, you know, you take in the car. You know, if you have more passengers in the rear, you have more luggage in the boot, then you may need to have a higher PSI, but that's just what I've done it to today. Now then, I know this video hasn't you know kind of being that complex like i said you know i haven't done any mods or um, repairs or anything like that but i hope it's kind of served as like a friendly reminder just to make sure that you're doing these checks regularly um because you know doing something as little as checking your tire tread and your tire pressure could prevent you from being in a nasty accident or like checking your coolant levels or your oil levels um could prevent you from uh like scrapping your engine so yeah, it, it's definitely worth doing these little checks just to make sure that, um, you know, the bare uh, minimum uh, checks have been done and, um, you know, you can potentially save yourself uh, a lot of money or, like I said, you know, prevent yourself from being in a nasty accident. So, yeah, I know it's been a little bit different, but I hope you have enjoyed it nonetheless. Please give this video a like if you have. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you have not already done so. And I'll see you guys in that next video. Peace. Bloody hell, I'm absolutely sweating.